It's fine, Sharon's here. Oh, yay. Yay. I'm here. <laughs> I just got your message, so I was about to message you back. But yeah, you're here. Yeah. It's easy when you know how. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. That's all right. How are That's you doing? Too. Not bad, not bad. I've just had a glass of mulled wine, you know, because it's that season, isn't it? So It is, it is. Oh, I'm very <laughs> jealous. I haven't had it. I've had some non-alcoholic mulled wine. Have you? <laughs> yes, we had our lovely Italian food festival this weekend, and and one Oops. of the makers did a did a spiced and sober mulled wine, which was very nice. So, very nice. but I'm hoping my partner will make the real thing at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the, I'm not the cook or whatever in our relationship. He does all the work, so I oh, I just fantastic. I just indulge. I, I like your style. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, okay. People are joining. I know Janet's here. Um, she's, she's been sending comments saying hello. So thanks, Janet, for joining. Hi, everyone that's joining. Um, we'll make a start in a second, but I just want to give a quick introduction for those that don't know who I am or who Woodfield are. So my name is Rosanna and I am a volunteer with the Woodfield Pavilion which is a community centre based uh, on Tooting Common in South London. And if you haven't heard of us before, the pavilion is run by the charity The Woodfield Project, of which I am also a trustee. And we aim to develop the pavilion as a centre for local communities and schools to share in culture, health, well-being, and to champion sustainability and the natural environment of the Tooting Commons where we are based. And I've started this Stitch Along series with video tutorials and chats with inspiring creatives. And tonight, uh, I'm very excited to be joined by the wonderful Sharon O'Connell. Yay! <laughs> Amazing. So if anybody has any questions at any point, please do put them in the comments and I'll do my best to um, relay them to Sharon. So, but first, it would be great, Sharon, if you could tell us a bit more about yourself, where you're based, because you're not London based. I'm not, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> your background, um, yeah, just give us, a, give us a bit of an introduction. Okay, well, I've, um, I've sort of, I, I say I've come, I've come late to art, but um, I've been an artist all my life, really, I suppose. But um, it, it's become my job, if you like, only in the last couple of years. Um, before that, I was predominantly in events management. So, you know, I'm an, I'm an organiser, essentially. Um, yeah. Big events and everything. And uh, um, and then, I suppose, my late 30s, early 40s, I was lucky enough to be supported by my husband, um, enough to go back to university, or to university, because mm -hmm. um, I hadn't done a degree um, previously to that, and uh, decided I wanted to pursue my art. Um, yeah. And I went and did an applied applied art degree. Um, yeah. In Lincoln. Explain, what, explain what explain what applied art is, because maybe some people don't know what applied yeah. art specifically is. So, um, so so before that, I actually did um, a foundation course in art at Chesterfield College in fine art. Now, fine art is the um, I suppose what you would normally call um the art that you see in galleries um it's it's normally got sort of a lot of meaning behind it or um you know th there's a, a purpose to it if you like um uh, and applied arts is more uh about making beautiful objects uh, there doesn't have to always be a reason behind it but um it's more um craft based i suppose in the in the truest you know um definition of the word if you like yeah um, yeah i did it, applied art at, um i did applied art at uh, a level actually did and, you yes. yeah i did i really and i chose that over fine art and i really enjoyed it actually because we got you know commissions so we got sort of fake um we got fake yeah, like, the same, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that you had to sort of make stuff for like i remember i had to make yeah. like a bed set and yeah. uh, you know a matching bed set think carpet and uh, it, it, it's and a lot stuff. more design based isn't it in a way yeah um, it's like a client based sort of yeah you have sort of a client you have to work towards yeah yeah and the, the reason it appealed to me was because um we got to use lots of different materials in it you know i did silversmithing i did um ceramics glasswork textiles 
stone masonry wow. um, woodworking you know all sorts of um yeah stuff so because it was based in lincoln university so we had the uh, the cathedral on hand as well you know so uh, that's where we had our final exhibition um, oh great it was fantastic <laughs> yeah i bet that sounds amazing yeah. well yeah you say um you say you've been an artist all your life and on your website you say you come from a long line of artistic people in your family tell us yeah. about that and what that was like growing up do you have any other sort of textile artists in the family well <sighs> Yes and no. Again, um, my both my mum and my dad are both very artistic people. You know, they've done, they've dabbled in. Uh, my mum particularly was um, did watercolours, oil colours. She designed and made wedding dresses. Wow. Um, but she was a nurse by profession. You know, <laughs> so it was just something she did in her spare time. Yeah. Um, and but my grandmother again, fantastic um, textiles needlewoman and artist again all hobby based really but you know quite professional when you look at the work they were doing mm -hmm. um and then if you go further back on my mum's side we've got scenic artists in the family um and i'm talking 1900s sort of upwards um and on my dad's side we've got um my great great grandfather actually in one of the census put down his occupation as an artist so wow so you know it's, it's obviously in the blood somewhere you know? yeah and what was that like growing up as a child and being sort of surrounded by yeah, artistic it people just, it was just um everybody just took it for granted that you just drew or you know you did you know it was always um it wasn't anything out of the ordinary particularly although it was always very supportive you know as a as a family it was always um um there was always praise you know and it was like you know grandparents always wanted to see your, your, your latest picture you'd done or you know <laughs> so oh that's so always nice interested, you know so it was great that's, um, that's amazing but not to more point, of that. absolutely yeah but not to the point that you'd ever think of doing it as a job, you know, it was a bit right. okay. weird in a way, you know, it was always, yeah. Know, I suppose that old age old thing of you never make any money out of it, you know. But <laughs> Yes, of course. But now, as you say, it is, it is your job. Yeah. Um, and would you say, I know on, on your website, you say you work with a lot of different um, art mediums and learnt a lot clearly at, at university. Mm -hmm. Um, but would you say felting is your main sort of medium at the moment? Would you describe yourself as a I'll always say at the felter? moment. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I do find when I'm working that um, uh, that the work develops, so you, you'll be trying out, you know, one technique. And the reason I, I love doing, you know, I've just got a couple of pictures up behind me so people can see, you know, what we're They're talking amazing. about if you like um but it, it's that sort of um it's a very free expressive way of working um i'll show you a bit in a, it, 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 a bit later on um but i i love that sort of that's that freedom of just um pulling a bit of wool you know like that and just laying it on a on the on a piece of material and just working with it and building up layers and layers and layers of um color yeah. um because that's what i think drives me is that is the the color and the textures and that building up of layers yeah um, you know without without again getting into because i i struggle sometimes with fine arts and applied arts mm. terms because i love I love the physicality of making something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I love sort of like, you know, um, getting my hands in some clay or, um, you know, as I said, you know, getting a needle and stabbing away with it to do felting or um, yeah. whatever it is, just the physicality of that making. But I also like um, creating things with, you know, with, with a hidden me a depth of meaning or, or because it means something to me. Um, yeah. And I think that's, you know, sometimes I think we can get too wrapped up in that applied art, fine art terminology. Yeah, yeah of course. Mm. And I think, yeah. yeah, maybe it's something to do with like the process as well. I think in fine mm. art, it's always like this is the finished piece and it look, you know, it's, yeah. it's 
it's sort of in its entirety and actually you know to to pick that apart and say well actually if we scanned it in we could see there was a mistake here and they reshaped this here yes. it's actually really not great to see that to see the sort of thought process behind it that yeah. is quite lost I think sometimes with with fine art over something like craft and with more and more people doing sort of work in progress shots or you yourself you film sort of like the birth of a picture I really yes, like yeah. that that's what it's called it's like yeah, yeah I love those and yeah. was felting something you did was that one of the crafts you learned at, at you no, no, I, I just picked that up fairly recently actually I was looking oh, okay. at, um, um I can't even really remember why I started doing it I think I was just wanting something um to do in a 2D format that was made rather than um painted because I, I really dislike working with paint um, and I love textiles. You know, I've done textiles for ages. I'm always, um, I've got a few bits here to sort of, um, you know, I'll, I'll see an idea or think of something that I want to do and I'll just do test pieces. Mm. So, you know, so I, wow. I saw something recently on a bit of weaving with felt and things. I thought, oh, I'll just give that a go, you know, and you just yeah, have a play around and, you know, that's, I've never weaved before in my life, you know. So that's, just, that's great. Um, but you know, it's like with with these. This is another. This is chamois leather. Wow. And, and I've used heat um, techniques to to burn into it and to make it go all um, curly um, yeah. and dyed it and everything. So you know, I'm always doing test pieces like this, mm. and then you know, that's a, another just. And they're not they're not for anything particular just for me to see you know i like that and this is this is the test piece i did i think this was one of the first piece of beltings i did wow. um, trying to get that sort of you know more 2d yeah uh, feel to something but actually creating it if you like and actually physically making it yeah um, and I, I you know i love heat techniques as well sort of again this is chiffon wow. that i've burnt into with um a soldering iron <laughs> wow so you know you get, some, you get some i don't know sorry is that too close you, to be no i can see it it's yeah. got some like amazing detail to you it look you look at different angles you can see the so again that's layers and layers of chiffon different colored chiffon that's wow. been you know heat treated into it um but then from that you know that there'll be the pictures will then grow and I'll get an idea of what I want to do. So at the moment, I'm really loving the felt work because it's it's almost like a, an expressionist, I suppose, or mm -hmm. sort of way of working. Um, yeah. That's not very detailed, but I can just, you know, you can lose hours doing it. And that's what I always think is a good test of whether I'm enjoying something or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's very true actually because it sounds like you've tried a lot of different you're sort of i i see these i'm not one of these people i sort of picked up embroidery and that's been it i sort of have oh, really? yeah i'm not one of these triers i'm like no i do embroidery whereas i meet people and they're like or they say they haven't found their craft yet they just try literally everything yeah. um i'm envious of those people actually but i'm sort of i guess i'm just yeah oh i'm doing embroidery right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> probably you know over a period of about 15 20 years maybe or you know, these. wow okay so it's, so it's not sort of like you know I, I don't get um distracted that easily from what i'm doing at the moment necessarily but <laughs> yeah yeah it's a but, process you know, your your embroidery is very fine and beautifully done and oh thank sort of, you um and i just you know i can embroider but i just i'd get impatient doing something as, as it's as funny fine you as say that, that. <laughs> It's funny you say that. My mum, my mum's um, in watching this, and she—that's what she says. She's um, she's a knitter, and I always thought of her as an incredibly patient person. But she said, "Oh no, I don't have the patience for embroidery." <laughs> See, I like I like stabbing things with a needle, and you know, getting well, my frustrations out. <laughs> no, I do like. Yeah, it's sort of it's very it's very good therapy, isn't it? Just sort of like very good, yeah. <laughs> it's been great this year. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Wow. Yes, I mean. How have you been finding lockdown and has your practice changed? There's a lot, there's it's a lot to talk about. Sorry, I'm talking yeah, over 
I was just saying there's been a lot of talk obviously this year about mental health for obvious reasons mm -hmm. and I myself have certainly seen an increase in people picking up crafts or getting more into their crafts um, and you know is craft is is it something therapeutic for you because I know it's your job and there's a tension I think sometimes when you sort of it's monetized there's a pressure there mm. and you sort of lose your enjoyment whereas actually mm. it can be an incredibly enjoyable thing that comes from a hobby and you sort of have to remember that love for it so i i do quite a lot of commissions um and um you know you do find that pressure when you've got commission when somebody's given you you know a picture of their favorite place that they want immortalized in <laughs> in felt you know <laughs> yeah yeah no pressure yeah <laughs> um and at the start of lockdown i'd had um about three you know i'm going back to the start of the year now right at the beginning um i'd had about three or four events cancelled um mm. and i find my art particularly um doesn't sell well online because um you know, if you said to somebody, oh, it's an oil painting, they, they get that and mm. they understand what that is. Um, and I think when you described it, you describe it as wool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Um, whereas I find, you know, in person, people sort of like, they, they look at the pictures and they, they want to know how it's made and you're talking to them. So I find, you know, art fairs and craft fairs are a really good way of selling my work. Um, other than by commissions mm. so that was quite frustrating for me um to have those cancelled at the beginning of the year and everything really go online um mm. and i found you know that in the first lockdown when we were all just stuck at home really not knowing what was happening with the world and um there was a huge amount online uh with artists um and the art community generally saying oh isn't this fantastic you know we've got the time we don't have anything else to do we can yeah. just really concentrate on our art and and there was all these people sort of like um you know just saying what a fantastic artistic time they were having and there was all these you know things being posted and and i just i couldn't work i right. couldn't i couldn't pick up anything let alone you know felting or whatever um and it was probably, I'd say, August time before I got back in. And it was just one day, I think. I just thought, oh, you know what? I'm just going to go into the studio and, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to create something for myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it was, and it was that. And, um, and I lost half a day and I thought, oh, oh yes, I like this again. <laughs> but it, yeah. it was, it was really weird because it's always been my outlet and suddenly mm. um you know I, I was there sort of like thinking the whole world was doing art apart from me yeah <laughs> yeah I think it was um oh, it was in one of the um the Sunday papers a couple of months ago they were interviewing um some really famous artists from around the world and asking about their you know exactly the same questions you've just asked me really and one of them said not being able to work I've had no, and I went, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yes. It's not just me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, it was it was me as well, actually. I, I got really um, in my own head about stuff. And it's mm. not even my job, but, I, you know, I've been thinking about sort of setting up a, a sh an online shop and things like that. Yeah. And I got really, yeah, I got really in Don't my head it, about it and was like, oh, you know, all these other people are being so productive and, mm. and what am I, you know, what am I doing? And, and I got, you know, to the point where, yeah, I stopped making as well, actually. Mm -hmm. And I did exactly the same thing as you. It's funny you say that. I literally yeah. just changed what I was doing. I stopped making the things. I can't even remember, really. But I was just like, right, I'm just going to do this. It's going to be new. And I'm just going to do it for me. It doesn't matter where it leads to. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to start doing it. And actually, that's been the spark for the rest of lockdown. That's but it's been like, oh, I've got it back now. Yeah. But it's interesting because when I wasn't doing my my art if you like um i did create um another area in the garden that was really arty when i look at it and i did loads of mosaic work there and so though i in my head wasn't creating looking back now from a bit of a distance 
I was. Yeah, <laughs> just definitely. in a completely different way, um, with different things actually, and that's you know, it, it's funny. I wasn't looking at it like that at the time. I think again, as you say, it's just your headspace, isn't it? Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't. I think a lot of, I think, uh, you know, there's an issue with sort of seeing being creative as, as yeah, you know, like we've talked about the sort of fine art. Um, mm. We put that on a pedestal. And if you're mm. not good at painting or you can't draw a life lifelike looking mm. person, you're not actually creative or you're not mm. good at art. Or, mm. or even that like art and only visual art is what is creative and mm -hmm. things like you know yeah cooking or, or gardening or whatever isn't creative when actually it, it is. is yeah yeah absolutely. and i yeah. think i'm hoping something out of this year has come to show more people that and to sort of more normalize creativity yeah a bit more and people sort of seeing it as something that they actually do do without possibly yeah. consciously thinking about it I, th I think for people who don't do art as um a job or even as a hobby I think sometimes you know taking time away from the the rigors of everyday life you know does allow them to actually say oh actually I do enjoy doing whatever it is yeah what to do. yeah yeah and that's so important now you know especially when we're like a lot of people myself included we're working from home and you don't actually have that separation mm. anymore you sort of you know your dining table becomes your your desk and you're like my you know I'm trying to sit and enjoy myself in the evening and my, my work literally is there. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to segregate yourself from it. And, actually... and you've got everybody else in the house as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Luckily, I only live with one other person because I don't... More than that, I don't know how... So do I, and that was enough. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't want any more than that, thank you. <laughs> I love him really. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just in, just in case we have to say that. <laughs> well, talk us through um, talk us through the felting process because okay. it's I, not I, something I did it at. You, I no, I did it at. Um, I'm going to uh, secondary school, I'm going and to... I think the pe the pictures behind you. I mean, from a distance, they look like they could be photographs or paintings, and then actually, when you get close to them, which is probably why. Mm -hmm people love seeing them you know face you're seeing mm. them in person because you can actually then properly see the textures and the, and the details oh wow i love your festive uh, you like them. <laughs> did you make those i did yes oh so, wow just, just a bit of fun for it <laughs> oh i love those those are brilliant <laughs> Those are excellent. I love those. But yeah, talk us through the birth so, of the picture. What I tend to do is, um, I tend, sorry, you can see me as well. <laughs> <laughs> I might be disembodied voice in a minute. Um, That's fine, don't worry. But I tend to start with a picture, sort of like, I've taken this one from, if anybody has tuned in that's done a workshop of mine, they might um, recognise it, because it's, I find it's quite a simple image, mm -hmm. that one. And is and that, that a picture that you have taken? That's is a photograph that I've taken from my lounge window, actually. <laughs> wow. Oh, the God. view from my lounge. <laughs> wow. And do you often use, yeah, do you often take your own photographs? Is it sort of you work from a photograph? I nearly always taken? work from photographs for, for, this, for this work. Um, mm -hmm. And in, in fact, even, you know, when I was at uni and college and things, um, I love working from photographs, even if it's um, close-ups of knots of wood or, um, you know, the patination you get on corrugated iron, yeah. or, you know, and I, I, I've used photographs of that and sometimes manipulated them or whatever. But, you know, that's where I've got ideas for, you know, this sort of thing. Um, yeah. And, but but it, it's very often from, from, um, from photographs that I work initially and it's just, it's just the way I like to almost do sketchbook work but, mm. and as I said I, I'll, I'll tear photographs up I'll, um, I'll manipulate them digitally or whatever just to give me sometimes it's a pattern that I work from you know just oh, depends yeah. what I'm doing um, yeah. but it can come from anything from you know photographs of raindrops or whatever it might be at the time but for this work for my felt work I tend to start with a photograph that I've taken Mm -hmm. or with commissions people will send me photographs of things that they want to have 
immortalized in art i suppose <laughs> and are they are they most like most often landscapes that people send you for commissions or i, I only work really in landscapes um yeah. people have asked me to do pets and things before and i just um i've never really tried it but it's not something that i really want to yeah, to do yeah. so I, I enjoy the landscapes i think well you've got to enjoy what you're doing as well so definitely I tend, to, tend to start with that as a sort of you know base um, if you like. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to get to... Um... And is that like a... Uh, do, you, do you normally work like that or do you normally work flat? I normally work flat. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and I'm probably not going Sorry. to complete anything in the time, Rosanna. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It's just knowing the process because, I mean, personally, I've only ever done felting at school and that was a lot like it was a long time ago and was that wet felting or was it needle felting because what i use is needle oh felting. yeah to be fair that was wet that was so where you sort of have the the rolling and yeah, yeah thing which I've is never wet. done needle yeah i've, I've never done needle. so needle felting you you use uh now i don't know if we're going to be able to see that but can you see that it's quite a sharp needle yeah um and you won't be able to see probably here but along the bits here there's barbs oh wow so that when when the needle goes into the wool it starts the wool knitting together if you like and okay. it literally um, makes it matte you know just mm -hmm. almost like dreadlocks or whatever um, mm -hmm. so the way I sort of like always approach my pictures um, is I it's very much a question of layering with me um, and um, Oh, years ago, I did a, an exercise at uni when we had to layer just black and white paint, and we had to layer it and layer it in, in a in a um, painting that we were doing, just to build up that depth of mm. texture, colour, or whatever you like to say. And that's that's the technique I suppose I use with the wool. Um, right. So I always start um, with what's furthest away um okay so since here it's going to be for me the the bit of the sun that's there and then all i literally do is once you've teased the wool apart you're then putting it onto the the base felt and just stabbing it in so the technique oh, so itself is actually quite um quite simple really yeah um, but then you're then layering up colors wow and so literally it's just sort of because it's the base felt did you say so you're just sort of stabbing yeah, I've, the wool into the felt so this is a pre um pre-bought just piece of felt you can use for kids hobbying really um i have made my own base felts in the past um but i tend to if I'm doing a, a a big picture, I tend to buy in sort of large pieces of felt, um, just because it's they're they're quite flat for mm. for landscape work of this sort. Um, yeah. But then you just you just literally then just starting to build up colour and just. Wow. Um, yeah, because the nice the nice thing about it when you tease it apart, it's it's got a it's got a translucent sort of quality to it, you know. So yeah. you can you can build up those layers really well. And the, and the, uh, the picture you can see behind me here um, was actually on a um, a grey piece of felt initially. Um, okay. So you can see you can't see any of the the base layer once it's mm. once once it's finished. Um, yeah. But you can see already how quickly that sort of you start to get a, a sense of the yeah the colours yeah um, but the more you the more you build these layers up the deeper the colour the deeper the um, um, the depth of field gets as well um, yes and you can yeah. just and you just keep what? doing that and, until you're satisfied and you want to finish it. And sometimes wow. that's the that's the art, isn't it? 
of yeah. stopping. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because, yeah, sometimes you don't know when to stop. Um, <laughs> Janet, Janet has asked, does the amount of stabbing, um, does that affect the image? Um, I, I thought she was going to say, does that uh, in direct relation to what the day's been like? And yes <laughs> is the answer to that. <laughs> Um, no, it doesn't, and I'll I'll show you why. Because with needle felting, every so often you do have to take it off the the foam uh, because can you see the back? Oh yes, okay. So this is where the wool has actually gone through the base layer of the felt. Yes. So as you stab it in the front, you're pushing. The wool through until it knits onto the back and the more you do that obviously the the thicker this this actually gets so a finished a finished picture will actually be quite thick by the time I've finished yes. it um, so actually the more you stab it probably the better because it it really starts to felt it you know mm. it starts but you know even you've seen how little I've actually stabbed it there and yeah. actually it's already quite robust you know okay. yes so it is yes. coming off because obviously I'd work it a lot more normally but yeah. you can see it's still it's still sort of yeah holding tight so, to the base layer so you you want it to, is it that you want it to come through at the back because then you know it's sort of like adhered to the to the layer well yeah. enough yeah absolutely and it means that the wool's not going to just lift off the front then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know if, if somebody bought a picture and then got it home and it just all sort of started to, to peel off gradually <laughs> over time it might not be great <laughs> <laughs> yeah so when, when you sell your pieces of, I know you frame them do you frame them with with glass in the front or just leave them so most people want glass on the front <laughs> really now so I, strug I struggle with this yeah <laughs> because if it was up to me I wouldn't put glass on it at all um but whenever I've tried to sell them without glass people say oh do you have one that's fully framed? Wow! And and I think it's I think it's almost that mentality because it looks like a landscape. Um, that's what people are expecting, and yeah. they're used to having it framed. Um, yeah. I don't I don't know. I can't quite get to the bottom of that. Um, mm. I've only ever once sold one without um, without glass in front of it. Yeah, but I love it. To me, it's really, really tactile. Well, know? yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, and, may and maybe again, it's that thing of like, oh, art's not meant to be touched, you know. Well, the, the, well and, and people are very worried about dust, which <laughs> can't say is ever something that wor worries me too much. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it probably, it probably should worry me a bit more. But uh... <laughs> but I, I just think you know, wool is wool is quite you know comes from sheep at the end of the day or you know whatever you use you know um but it is that sort of um it's tough stuff you know it's yeah and it might pick up a bit of dust but i've got textile art on my wall downstairs that has been there for years and i don't i occasionally do hoover it actually i have to say but oh wow <laughs> it, it's a peace of mind so it's fine <laughs> Oh, so you can hoover it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, you you said you mentioned that you teach workshops, um, which is great. So tell us a bit more about about that. And I'm, I'm guessing right now it's a bit tricky. But um, what sort of workshops do you? I, teach? I haven't you know? done. I've not attempted to do anything online. I have to say this year, just because I I took the decision. I just I've I've almost just thought I'm going to start again in January. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or whenever we can. Um, yeah. but um you know i've it's um it's basically you know we, we go through almost what i've just done there and some people walk away with um a picture they've made at the end of the day and they all look um they all look slightly different and we've all gone mm -hmm. from the same photo um which is tends to be this one as i said because it's quite a um it's, it's quite a simple one to start yeah. off with um there's no bridges in it or anything like that. 
that uh, the birth of a picture thing <laughs> was yeah <laughs> can you imagine when I got that one as a commission piece you know <laughs> yeah I know wow <laughs> incredible um so yes um so yeah it's just just fun you know we just go through needle felting techniques and um if anybody wants to try this at home do be careful though because when you're stabbing away and you're stabbing away like that the amount of times I've gone through my finger yes it's 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 dangerous craft it's, yes <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I know I've yeah. actually I've uh, I've now invested in um I'm not a massive fan of thimbles actually because I find them quite they sort of reduce your yeah your dexterity but um mm. I've got uh uh these sort of rubber they they they're rubber and they, they actually help you to like yeah they sort of help you pull the needle through mm -hmm. um because I was getting really bad yeah really bad um you getting of... calluses well more sort of like <laughs> actually the needle sort of going in <laughs> so i've got like uh, metal guards as well so they sort of they're not a full thimble they just sort of hook on and yeah. then you can resize them as well because i find when you buy thimbles and you're like oh it doesn't actually fit what a waste yeah. of my money yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've got a couple of silver thimbles that were uh, my great great aunts that um i have used when i've been doing oh, things but um but <sighs> I'm like you. I just I prefer to get stabbed. I think you know, and it's yeah, just, uh... yeah. It sort of feels better, and you're not yeah. You're sort of like more more in touch with what you're making. It's real blood, sweat, and tears, isn't it? You know, it is. It's <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've also made those amazing little Santas up there, and I, I know from um, your social you made um, little ghosts. Was oh, it yes, for, it did, for yeah. Halloween? Yeah, that's <laughs> brilliant. Do you do like kits or anything, or or thought about selling like kits? Yeah, I have and I haven't. Um, again, it's one of those that there's so many um, of the subscription kits online now that, yeah. um, and you know, because they're fairly big companies doing them, they can do them so much cheaper than really mm. um, I could in 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 that way. So I do sell them at. At workshops if I do a workshop um, um, but um, I haven't really put that online yet because yeah um, again I prefer I, I prefer to make the pictures you know and I prefer to do art for people to take away and hang on their walls really I suppose um, yeah they're just sort of fun fun little, uh, I, little workshops aren't something that I, I do all the time you know it's it's one of those that um, um, I'll do them if people want me to yeah, I've done them for a a couple of friends who run galleries and things like that um nice um and i think yeah. that was after getting me to do one earlier this year and unfortunately it had to be cancelled <laughs> oh no well well next year we're, next year <laughs> yes we are we're actually planning a um a month dedicated to to textiles <gasps> Lovely. So this, yeah so um yes definitely it'd be great to have you on, on board for that because oh I definitely think... yeah yeah, people yeah. would love to. I'd love to try needle fencing. I've never done it, and it looks it just looks so satisfying. And yeah, yeah I'd, I'd love to I, try I, I think you know when you're combining um, wet felting and needle felting as well, that can be quite fun. Um, yeah. So you can actually you know have the so the Santas. This is all wet felted first. Oh wow! And then just needle felted onto the top yeah it's interesting how sort of because the wet felting i didn't yeah, deliberately I have now. this here by the way <laughs> <laughs> here's what i made earlier you know <laughs> yeah ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> the wet felting yeah it, it look it's sort of i remember now it it, you, it becomes very matted quite quick because i guess the water and the and the soap and and then the needle felting i guess you can be as you say sort of a looser expressionist yeah it's sort of style it's with it and I think with wet felting, um, I just don't like the um, the unpredictability of it. I think sometimes, and okay. I, and I know the um, I, I know there's it doesn't have to be unpredictable in a way, but I just it just doesn't appeal to the way I work. I think that's um, you know yeah. I know some fantastic um, wet felt artists who do amazing you know really intricate pictures with their wet felting but it's just it's just not a process that i enjoy so uh, um i don't like mind doing it. 
I do. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes a really self. nice sound, actually. It makes a really nice sound. Well, it's very enough, sort of, you well, know, I, all senses. Well, while I was waiting for um, to start this evening, I was just, you, you know what it's like, you, you just start messing around, don't you? It's like, I've just done a, a felt ball while we've been talking there. Um, but I was there and I, I was there going, I don't know what's wrong with my um, my felting needle. And I was going, you know, I was thinking, doesn't sound right and I realized I'd picked up a just a normal needle <laughs> <laughs> but it is funny it does sound di totally different it does yeah because you know? I didn't oh. realize I didn't realize it had the barbs on um on the end of it so I've seen I've seen them before but I didn't realize it had that yeah, sort they're, of they're actually that texture quite, quite rough if you sort yeah. of um you could do um, damage with one of those yeah <laughs> Well, what pro what projects are you are you currently working on, and and what what oh. will we be seeing? What will we what will we be seeing next? Well, interestingly, um, because I haven't um, got any uh, fairs or haven't had any fairs in the last couple of months, I've started on a piece for myself. Oh, nice! Um, if I just sit here. Excuse me a second. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> So, and this is an experimental piece, um, but if I can, let's just, if I can get wow. it in. So, oops, oh, sorry. Are you still there? Yeah, sorry. It's all right. I am still here. I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to um, remove the things so that you can see. There we go. Wow. So this was my... Um, what I started with this with the lockdown was um you, you've all really missed like holidays and things yes. well I have anyway you know yeah want some sunshine <laughs> yeah exactly um, and it started that um so this was originally going to be um quite monochrome uh, monochromatic um and I think I think I just work in colour I think my brain just always goes to colour for some reason um so as you can see it's not monochromatic at all <laughs> very colourful <laughs> yeah um, but actually what I'm what I'm starting to do with this is to make it more 3D mm. um so as I said this is this is nowhere near you know done yet um but I'm starting to sort of um mm. just and again, this can't be put behind glass. Yes. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a way to get round it. <laughs> so I, I don't I don't quite know where this is going yet. Um, but it is it is sort of starting to really almost frame itself. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, yes. so And what is that made on? Is it uh, uh, so the dark is it still felt or is it a different so again, yeah it's just i had a base piece of felt on the back mm. and then i've gradually just built the the surrounding bits up yeah so i always show you the back because actually you can see the workings on the back sometimes yeah no i love seeing um, the backs of things yeah are you like me with the embroidery on the backs you always turn it over to see how neat it is well, it's just funny you say that because um, when I went to my first ever sort of introduction to embroidery class, um, the teacher was like, oh, you know, professional embroiderers would say that the back should be as neat as the front. And I've always thought, no, nah, I, don't, I don't I don't care about that. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm not a professional embroiderer. And also, yeah, yeah. whatever. I mean, I sort of do um, look at it. and um, But at the same time, I'm like, it's actually quite, quite nice to see to see the workings and like you know on my brooches I don't cover a lot of people cover over the back oh yeah and they just they just have the pin whereas I haven't done that oh, mainly lovely. because I haven't figured out how to do it but also <laughs> because I think it's quite nice to see yeah. to see the threads sometimes I was gonna say I, I quite like that actually um yeah I, I I always like the backs of embroideries um and I, I have to say, I am one of those that takes great pride in making it as neat on the back as I can, just so, because I have my mother in my ear going, it should be really neat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I guess it's like a pro, pro, pros and cons from coming from a long line yes. of artists. It's like <laughs> inspiration, but also maybe, uh, the, yeah. The, <laughs> so, the voice to, to me, that, that that's a sort of pride thing, I suppose, just because I have you know that's how I was taught to do it but um, um mm. but yeah I, I really liked sea workings actually um yeah you know and, and I think that's one of the reasons I I don't like putting glass on my work um yeah I don't know it's just it's just um I, I like to be able to touch things and I, years ago um I don't know if um this might be before your time Rosanna I'm not quite sure how old you are but... <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> We'll find out. <laughs> um, there was um, one of the Turner Prizes was the uh, Chapman Brothers and they did the mm. blow up doll um, bronzes. I don't know if you. Okay. Um, I mean, I know I know of the Chapman look, Brothers and their work. Look, look it up anyway at some point. So they did literally a blow up doll that was made out of bronze, and they wouldn't um, they wouldn't allow. Oh, thank you very much, Derbyshire makers. Yeah, I've just seen that. <laughs> Um, it, it's a it's a group of makers we've got in Derbyshire that we've actually banded together this year and got really strong actually. So it's been lovely. I've seen a couple of oh. people of, like supporting me tonight. So thank you everybody. Hi all, thanks for joining. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I thought it would be really really interesting of Tate Britain if they'd allowed people to touch it because by the end because they were it's painted so it's a it was a bronze piece that was painted then just to look like a blow up doll. And I thought it would have been really interesting at the end of the exhibition to see where the paint had rubbed off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but they wouldn't let you touch it. And I, I did Ugh. get told off because I, I rubbed a knee, just a knee. <laughs> <laughs> you chose the knee. <laughs> I chose the knee. <laughs> interesting. But, I'll look that up. Yeah, but, I'll look um, that up. Cause... But I, I think pictures or, or art should be, you know, obviously some isn't suitable for it but um i do like art that can be touched and yeah you know, and i think that's i think that's definitely a barrier as well to people you know where it's like oh you know touch with your eyes you know you can't mm -hmm. you know you can't actually touch things which which creates a barrier between you and it yeah. um where it's it's not something you can actually interact with no. um and you know i think you know galleries and museums have sort of um handling handling stations or things and but they tend to be for for kids which is great but i'm like i think they just should be for everybody but because there's so, there's so many you know particularly um sculptures and things can be touched without any problems you know and yet yeah. there's this hands-off attitude that i um i do resent sometimes actually um yeah i think it's yeah. a shame. i really do think it's a shame i don't always think it's the intention of the artist um no that's yeah that's an interesting question as well mm -hmm. i guess it's like if if a gallery has bought an artwork or even just lending it um and and i i i think it's when there is an artwork that you can interact with and can mm. can touch there's almost like even if you're told you can there's still a a big sort of hesitation I think a lot of people yeah. sort of don't want to or they think oh no I'm still going to be told off for it or something where it's mm -hmm. like no that's actually what the artist wants you yeah. to do <laughs> you can touch it you can pick it up <laughs> there was a, a friend of mine at university put um what one of his pieces was um he put a um 10 pound note on a plinth uh behind a red um cord you know like a do not touch cord yeah um and that ten pound note was still there at the end of the exhibition. <laughs> wow, brilliant! Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> it is interesting. Yeah, because like if you then put another ten pound note just like on the floor somewhere over there, probably wouldn't still no, be there. But it was behind a rope, so you know nobody would touch it. Yeah, it on, a, on a pedestal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really interesting. Well, thank you so much. The time time always goes so quickly when I oh, do that's, these. Oh, we need the over. Gosh. Well, yeah, because we get we get kicked off after an hour. No, it'll just it'll just stop, and it's nearly been fifty five minutes, which is yeah. incredible. <laughs> um, Derbyshire makers did ask a question. Uh, they said your the work is beautiful. When will it be finished? Is it a landscape of some sort? Um, I don't know when it will be finished um, because it's almost an experimental piece. This one, so 
um, it depends whether I actually do finish it or whether it moves on to something else. Uh, yeah. So we'll have to see on that one. But uh, yeah. I'll post it. So keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> yes. Well, that's a great segue into how can people find you and how how can people get in contact with you, your website so, and things like that. Uh, my website is Sharon's. Uh, so it's Sharon Studio Arts. <laughs> dot com <laughs> um, and you can find the link on my instagram page it's uh, and i'm also on facebook on the uh, sharon's studio art as well um, yeah i'll put all the links and uh, and tag you in the, lovely thank in the you. post as well so people can people can find you and get in contact you see get... if i'd been organized i'd have had a a, a, a thing up here with no now <laughs> No, it's fine. I'll put it in the I'll put it in the caption. Yeah, and uh, thank you so much. It's um, been lovely us. talking to you. Absolutely lovely. So uh, hopefully we'll see really each lovely. other. I know. I I really hope so. And yeah, it would be wonderful to to have you do like a workshop or something for yeah, Woodfield. So we'll chat about that. Watch for this space. sure. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and a shout out to everybody watching. Thank you so much. If anybody is interested or know. Uh, someone who might be interested in joining me for a chat. I do these stitch alongs uh, once a month um, or you can do a video, video tutorial if you don't want to go on live. But yeah, please do get in touch with me via the Woodfield. You can direct message us or you can email us at the Woodfield project at gmail.com. So please do if you know anybody. Um, I'm always looking for people to, to connect with and share their work because there's just some really truly amazing makers out there and we want to create a platform for them so thank you so much sharon um we've got some lovely uh comments it's lovely to see smiley faces well done on your life thank you derbyshire makers thank you janet everyone have a have a great rest of your evening a good christmas and festive season as well thank you so much sharon and i hope to see you yeah i hope to see you very soon thanks very much take care thank you bye everyone good evening bye